If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, monthlyfeerx.com might be a good option for you. Welcome back. Hey, I, I know you're trying to get in, but we're having a little bit of a problem with the phones right now. So if you find that you're getting disconnected, sorry, we, we are working on it. So here's an alternative. You can always use the app chat. Download the WBSM app if you don't already have it. And then go right to where you can send your message. And I've got it plugged into the computer here. So when that message comes through, I can I can get to it. Because there are a couple of things you might want to talk about today. Let me get to the Bryansby quote of the day. And it comes from... U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. How do you think we build the future? I think we build it by investing in our kids and investing in education. How do you think we build our future? I think we build it by investing in our kids and investing in education. Massachusetts U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren with our quote of the day. Now, I think it's very timely that I use that particular quote because I have a couple of stories here, both dealing with the town of Dartmouth. Both have been very, very controversial. When I brought up well, actually, I brought both of them up during the during the headlines. But there was a school committee candidates meeting not too long ago in, in Dartmouth. And the question of the Dartmouth logo, the, the Indian, came up for discussion. And you might ask, well, why? You know, the, the voters already said we want to keep it. And I say we because I live in Dartmouth and I was one of those that voted to keep the logo as the Indian. Well, the Great and General Court, also known as where the Bacon Hill lawmakers hang out and the governor hangs when she's in town. There's a bill. And this bill would ban any school from using a logo that is deemed culturally offensive. And what would fall under culturally offensive? The Dartmouth Indian logo. Now, I understand. I voted like you did. But this is what the legislature wants to do. And my guess is, unless there's a quick turnaround, and there's not going to be a turnaround before next January, if this current legislature votes, the Dartmouth Indian logo will have to be done away with. Now, you might get some grace period. It might be able to last through this school year. But going into the next school year, more of your tax dollars are going to be spent to come up with yet another logo and design and mascot. All the sports teams, they're going to have to make changes, stuff like that. So it's up there. Best thing that the U's and me's can do is to vote the bums out. I don't know if there's enough gusto to do that. Certainly in the town of Dartmouth, if if there was one issue, one issue and only the voters in Dartmouth could could make that vote, a lot of the lawmakers would uh, be gone. But unfortunately, there are a whole bunch of people in this state. And if the legislature approves, I don't think folks in other district districts will vote out their state rep over over this one issue. Sad but true. All right, let's 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 stay in Dartmouth, if you don't mind. 
because I read this story and I said, you have got to be kidding me. But of course, I am not. So apparently at Dartmouth High School, vaping, yeah, vaping, yes, vaping, has become what school officials are deeming a problem. And where is it happening? Bathrooms. Students are vaping in the bathrooms. Now, I'm not here to recommend any student or condone any student for vaping in the bathroom. But I get an absolute swift kick in the butt how school folks and town folks go about trying to make sure kids do not vape in the bathroom. And, and by the way, when you hear about the price tag that, that we, the taxpayers, are paying for kids to go to school, keep in mind, trying to stop kids from vaping goes toward, goes toward that $21,000 that is spent per pupil each year. Now, if you're a student that isn't into vaping, it's still divided by you being in school. So there's a part of that 21,000, 21 to 23,000, whatever the price is that you're really not, you know, no money's really being spent on you. So here's what Dartmouth school officials have done to stop vaping at Dartmouth High School. They now have monitors in the bathrooms. I don't mean teachers. I don't mean police. They've got these sensors that they put in the bathroom. And when a student goes to vape in the bathroom, it triggers the sensor. And the sensor measures when it went off, and how much vape was in the air during the time that it went off. And I suppose in the hallways where they can have cameras, they can see who went in and who came out of the bathroom at that particular time, and the next thing you know, you're nabbed. Nabbed for vaping. Again, I'm not condoning vaping. What I am saying is, the measures to stop kids from vaping. I, you know, we don't want fighting in the hallway. We don't want bullying in the school. And we really don't want vaping. But to, to go out and spend money, and it's not a ton of money, but it's still money that could be used for books, you know, that kind of stuff. Things that maybe would make kids want to learn. But no, got to go out and get these monitors for the bathroom, make sure kids aren't vaping. But it goes even further. According to Principal Ryan Shea, we really need to know the extent of the problem and then develop a full response to the problem. Right now, we're just logging the data. It, it's almost like a bill that gets pushed off into study. We got to find out the extent of the problem. We're going to spend your tax dollars to find out the extent of the vaping problem in the Dartmouth High School bathrooms. And you might be thinking, Brian, why are you even making a big deal about this? I won't argue that vaping is bad. But you know, at some particular time, we as a tax-paying voting populace have to make a decision 
is stopping the vaping more important than the general education of the student? Now, if you're asking for my vote, I'm saying the general education of the student. That doesn't mean I want somebody to be vaping in the bathroom. By the way, aren't there some free teachers or free custodians or free cafeteria workers, free somebody within that building at the, at the particular time that kids could be going to the bathroom, that they could, you know, stand by the door. You know, you're not, you're not spying on somebody at the urinal or at a toilet, but you're making sure they're not vaping. Wouldn't that be a a good use of resources? And then if they're not vaping, you don't have to worry about it. But it gets a little bit deeper. It gets deeper. Now, the superintendent of Dartmouth schools, she says, we want to be clear that it's not okay to vape in school in the bathrooms. It's just not acceptable behavior. Yeah. True, it's not acceptable behavior. But if the data reveals that vaping is a widespread problem, it could lead to some changes in the school district's health education curriculum. (laughs) I'm almost speechless to think that vaping, vaping is a part of the health curriculum. Again, are we teaching what to learn or how to learn? Gets even bigger, worse. What happens if a If a student athlete gets caught vaping, what happens if a student athlete gets caught vaping? In the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association handbook, it prohibits students from vaping and students who violate this The first time. So in other words, you got bagged in Baghdad. First time offenders, you are suspended from 25% of the games for that particular season. Really? For vaping? For vaping. 25. I can see. Family saying, get my kid out of here. You're out 25% of the gains because you were caught vaping. To me, that is a bit ridiculous. So, if it's a widespread problem, and, and who determines what widespread is in the Dartmouth bathrooms? Is it that sensor it's going to beep, 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 beep too many times? Or how much vape smoke is consumed? Man, this is how bad it's gotten. According to Principal Shea, there are students that might need more support than we can offer. This is how deep it gets. According to Principal Shea, just a detention or suspension isn't going to deter the students from the behavior. The behavior. We need to get the medical side on it. So now there's talk about bringing in medical professionals for students that vape. Again, I'm not here to say that vaping is good. But if vaping is is so bad, let the parents know and let the parents make a decision about what should happen to their kid 
who has vaped. If the kid vapes and he plays a sport or she plays a sport, they're out 25% of the games. According to the Interscholastic Athletic Association, I think that is more than a bit harsh for your first offense. Man. You can go through a red light and not get hit as hard as you get for vaping one time. According to Principal Shea, students who are caught vaping are required to complete a reflective assignment. Reflective assignment. Doesn't that sound so nice? I remember. I remember back in sixth grade. If you got caught chewing gum, you got one of those reflective assignments. I will not chew gum in the classroom ever again. And you had to write it maybe 25 times. You got to practice your penmanship. You couldn't print. Because by sixth grade, you should know cursive. And this was going to help your cursive. So you spent that time in class writing that you will no longer chew gum in school. By the way, there were kids that got caught more than once chewing gum. So it goes to show you how well the reflective assignment worked. This is, this is utterly ridiculous. Uh, The reflective assignment on the dangers of vaping. The focus is on intervention rather than punishment. I don't know if you are writing an assignment, don't you consider that punishment? That is just more work on top of the work that you already have to do. So this is what's going on at Dartmouth High School. My guess is when the survey comes back, they're going to say, "Uh uh-oh, this is widespread, even if it's only two or three times or two or three times a day. I, I don't know what is widespread. And that's the key here. If there's more money to fund something like this, the money will be used because it's widespread. If it worked well, well, we got to keep it up. So we're going to add even more monitors. We might even decide to put these monitors over at the junior high school. They never know when to stop. And by the way, how is this really impacting someone's education? So another, you know, I know it's bad. A student walks into the bathroom who wants to use the facility and somebody is vaping. That kid has choices. He can either stay in there during the vape or can go to another bathroom or use a a single-use-only bathroom. There are other bathrooms at Dartmouth High School. I've been over there. We have town meeting over there. So there are choices. 508-996-0500. I'm I'm giving out the number. I'm looking at the phones, and I'm saying, oops, I can't take your call right now, but I can go over to Studio 6 and 7 eighths. That's where Jim Phillips is patiently waiting. He's got a Town Square Sunday update for us. Morning, Jim. How you doing this morning? Hello, Brian, and good morning, everyone. Here's what's happening this week on Town Square Sunday. New Bedford Superintendent Andrew O'Leary will share some thoughts on next year's school spending and what he plans to do with $21 million in COVID funds that must be spent by September. We'll meet Paul Rooney, the author of Widow's Cove, a fictional murder mystery set in New Bedford and the Cape. And we'll get a news update with Jack Spillane, columnist for the New Bedford Light. I'm Jim Phillips. Join me for Town Square Sunday, Sunday morning at 6 and 11 on 1420 WBSM 99.5 FM. Thank you very much, Jim. And now let's take a look at the Bitcoin business barometer where we measure, measure the universal crypto marketplace. Man, oh, Manischewitz, if you'd put a little money, just a little money into Bitcoin, 
you would be jumping up and down. Happy days are here again. You wouldn't care. You wouldn't care about winning that lottery that's up around $900 million. Well, you might. Bitcoin up $5,855 from last week at this time, coming in at $70,021. $70,021. Bitcoin has never, at least not until this week, never crossed $70,000 before. Congrats. I'm happy. Ethereum. $3,503. $3,503. That's up 161 bucks. Binance Coin up $92 at 604. Solana $198 up $24 from last week. By the way, it was up $24 the week before, so that's 48 bucks over the past 2 weeks and and for Solana, that is excellent. XRP up a penny at 62 cents. Dogecoin up a nickel at 21 cents and Cardano coming in at 65 cents this morning. That is up three cents from last week at this time. And that's your Bitcoin biz barometer for today, March 30th, 2024, the day before Easter, the day after Good Friday. As always, I get my numbers from coinmarketcap.com because, quite frankly, the numbers are always changing and coinmarketcap.com keeps up with it every, every second of the day. Let's see. I'm going to take a quick peek over at the app chat. Do we have anybody apping and anybody chatting? No, nope, not yet. But you can always app chat me. Simply download the WBSM app. And thank you, South Coast Towing for allowing us to have the WBSM app. I am looking over some of the things that are, that are happening over at Dartmouth high school. And, you know, my two sons graduated from Dartmouth high. Vaping may not have been a big thing back when they were in school, but I still see Dartmouth high school kids, even today, Young looking. I wonder what they think about these sensors being put in the school. Again, you could have a sensor, you could have a a human body if if you're worried that much about it. You know, we've got vice principals. Can't they monitor washrooms, bathrooms? Can't we have a custodian who might be on a bit of a break or I shouldn't say a break, but not having a heavy part of the workload at that particular time. Can't they monitor a bathroom? Can a teacher who is not in class monitor the bathrooms? No, let's just go out and spend money on sensors and then we'll, we'll make a decision. Of, of how widespread the problem is. And if it's widespread enough, and you tell me what widespread enough is, there's going to have to be changes to the health curriculum. If your child plays a sport, an interscholastic sport, and she or he vapes just one time, you know, they might just, I might take a puff and they get caught. They get caught. They will miss 25% of the games for the particular season that they're in. Now, I guess if it's at the end of the season, it's no big deal. Maybe you miss the last couple of games. But it's a big deal because why? Why are we suspending kids? From, from athletic events because they vaped. Now, I'm going to back off that just a little bit because if the coach catches you, it's one thing. I might even say if the principal catches you. 
The superintendent's not going to catch you because the superintendent is doing superintendent type jobs. But when the MIAA has to make a blanket rule over kids vaping, again, I'm not condoning vaping. But this is this is how swampy things are getting. And you have to wonder, at least I do, when and where does it all end? Does it end? There are students that might need more support than we can offer, according to Principal Ryan Shea. Just a detention or suspension isn't going to deter students from the behavior. We need to get to the medical side on it. Now you're going to be calling in folks like Hawthorne, South Coast, Greater New Bedford Community Health Center. They need to get involved. What are you going to do? Strap the kid to a gurney? This is absolutely insane. Again, not here to say go ahead and vape. But I am here to say the way that you try to stop it is to have some human beings at these bathrooms. Let them monitor it. Instead, you got to get the machine out there. Artificial intelligence is going to tell us how we should handle vaping in our schools. That's on you. 508 508- Nine nine six zero five hundred. Brian's beat on WBSM. Oh. Well, uh, we're not living in a tree. We're living in a zone. I I just got a call on my on my cell phone from somebody who who deals within New Bedford schools. Someone I know and and, and trust. No, not Chris Cotter. Apparently, vaping is a huge problem over. Over at the New Bedford schools. And they, too, are bringing in, if they don't already have them, the monitors. I said, what about the people? You know, just have people doing. He said, I love the idea, but we are short-staffed. They're short about 25 people. Well, I get it. But I do know this. I know that. When you go into school, let's say 7 o'clock in the morning, and then you leave at 3, that you have two or three breaks during the day. And if vaping is such a problem, that I think that a teacher, you know, union contract or not, would want to, you know, make sure the kids aren't vaping. Now, this person who, who called me said, Vaping is a bigger problem than, than even I would want to believe. He says sometimes there's THC in the vape. And sometimes people are carted away in, in ambulances. Not knowing for sure, I, w- I think I would like to know what the numbers are. Because too many times, too many times, it happens two or three times... And all of a sudden, it's out of proportion. It's widespread. So I, I do appreciate the call. I'm still going to stick to where I am on this because when, when I see that the MIAA, the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, is going to be Benching kids for 25 games. I say bench, suspended. They can't, they can't even dress up for 25% of the games for that, for that particular season. And that's just the first offense. Now, I know somebody's going to turn around and say, well, you make it such a stiff penalty to make sure they don't do it again. Really? Do you believe that? I remember when the football coach, you know, he, this, this one kid, you know, we, we had a no smoking policy on the football team and there were kids who smoked. And this one guy, he broke his leg and he was in the hospital 
And he was a smoker. The coach came to his hospital room not long after I was there. Excuse me, before I was there. And when I got there, the guy was smoking. And I said, what did the coach catch you? He goes, he was just here. And, he, and the guy had an ashtray and stuff like that. And he said, well, he couldn't suspend me because I'm out for the rest of the season. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to play. But he had that look on his face. And that guy, as we went through high school, he didn't quit smoking. There are people that I've known that vaped. I mean, that's what they like to do. Now, I'm talking adults right now. But they're not going to just put it down because you say, hey, you can't vape here. There, there are times, I think we even have a no vaping policy here in the studio. Every once in a while, somebody would vape. Not trying to make, you know, can it be a big deal? Yes. But how far do we go? Do we go that we're, we're going out and getting monitors and then changing the health curriculum because people are vaping? Do you want it to go that Do you think it's going to change? You know, yeah, the curriculum might change, but will the attitude of the student change? I don't think so. I could be wrong. Won't be the first time. Certainly won't be 